I do have one big regret. I left Harvard with no real awareness of the awful inequities in the world, the appalling disparities of health and wealth and opportunity that condemn millions of people to lives of despair. I left campus knowing nothing about the millions of people living in unspeakable poverty and disease in developing countries. It took me decades to find out. You know more about the world's inequities. Think about how, in this age of accelerating technology, we can finally take on these inequities and we can solve them. How can we do the most good for the greatest number with the resources we have? During our discussions on this question, Melinda and I read an article about the millions of children who are dying every year in poor countries from diseases, measles, malaria, pneumonia, hepatitis B, yellow fever. One disease that I had never heard of, rotavirus, was killing half a million children each year. We were shocked. We asked, how could the world let these children die? The answer is simple and harsh. The market did not reward saving the lives of these children, and governments did not subsidize it. So the children died because their mothers and fathers had no power in the market and no voice in the system. But I talk to skeptics who claim there is no hope. They say, inequity has been with us since the beginning and will be with us until the end because people just don't care. I completely disagree. And yet we did nothing, not because we didn't care, but because we didn't know what to do. If we had known how to help, we would have acted. The barrier to change is not too little caring. It is too much complexity. To turn caring into action, we need to see a problem, see a solution, and see the impact. Even with the advent of the internet and 24-hour news, it is still a complex enterprise to get people to truly see the problems. When an airplane crashes, officials immediately call a press conference. They promise to investigate, determine the cause, and prevent similar crashes in the future. But if the officials were brutally honest, they would say, of all the people in the world who died today from preventable causes, one half of 1% were on this plane. We're determined to do everything possible to solve the problem that took the lives of the one half of 1%. The problem is not just the plane crash, but the millions of preventable deaths. The situation is so complex that we don't know how to help. And so we look away. Cutting through complexity to find solutions runs through four predictable stages. Determine a goal, find the highest impact approach, deliver the technology ideal for that approach, and in the meantime, use the best application of technology you already have. We have to work with what we have in hand, and the best prevention approach we have now is getting people to avoid risky behavior. The crucial thing is to never stop thinking and working, and never surrender to complexity and quit. The final step is to measure the impact of the work and to share that success or failure so that others can learn from the efforts. But if you want to inspire people to participate, you have to show more than numbers. You have to convey the human impact of the work so people can feel what saving a life means to the families affected. I love getting people excited about software, but why can't we generate even more excitement for saving lives? You can't get people excited unless you can help them see and feel the impact. The way to do that is another complex question. 
Still, I'm optimistic. New tools we have to cut through complexity have not been with us forever. The defining and ongoing innovations of this age, biotechnology, the personal computer, and the internet give us a chance we've never had before to end extreme poverty and end death from preventable disease. As my class graduated without me, technology was emerging that would make the world smaller, more open, more visible, less distant. It dramatically increases the number of brilliant minds we can bring in to work together on the same problem, and it scales up the rate of potential innovation to a staggering degree. We need as many people as possible to gain access to this technology because these advances are triggering a revolution in, human, in what human beings can do for one another. Should Harvard students know about the depth of global poverty, the prevalence of world hunger, the scarcity of clean water, the girls kept out of school, the children who die from diseases we can cure? Should the world's most privileged learn about the lives of the world's least privileged? My mother, who was filled with pride the day I was admitted here, never stopped pressing me to do more for others. For she said, from those to whom much is given, much is expected. When you consider what those of us here in this yard have been given in talent, privilege, and opportunity, there is almost no limit to what the world has a right to expect from us. Don't let complexity stop you. And I hope you will come back and reflect on what you've done with your talent and your energy. I hope you will judge yourselves, not on your professional accomplishments alone, but also on how well you treated people a world away who have nothing in common with you but their humanity. Good luck.